right, so I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting, and we're all from different areas, so that covers a lot of lot of land. Um, so I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the original elders of other communities who may be here today. Alrighty, and is that Nas jumping on now? Perfect. Alrighty, good timing, Nas. Alrighty, so. What we've done is with this panel, we've attempted to attend to all sort of uh, spinal injury levels or wheelchair user levels. Um, but it's important to explain that all spinal injuries are different. So different approaches work for everyone. These are just sort of a general guide to try and cater for everyone. Alrighty, so I'll start by um, introducing a bit about myself and then we'll go through the panel and get on to explain a bit about themselves. So how long have they been a wheelchair user for and what they sort of do on a day-to-day -day basis or on weekends. So about myself, I've been in a, um, I'm a T2 paraplegic. So I've been in a wheelchair about 12 years now. Um, and on a day-to-day -day basis, I ride my hand cycle about six days a week. Um, I go to gym twice a week to try and keep as active as possible. Um, and then on top of that, I like to get out and socialize and push around my neighborhood in Montmorency. It's quite hilly. Um, and I also am qualified personal trainer as of about two weeks ago. So I'm excited to try and work with spinal injured clients or wheelchair users. And um, yeah, that's a bit about myself. Um, Georgina, would you like to go next? Sure. Thanks, Lockie. Um, I'm not as active as Lockie, but I, I do try and get some exercise in every morning. And um, I do push a little bit around and about my neighborhood. Uh, I work uh, part-time, three days a week at AQA, and um, I also like socialising, um, being around family and friends, and I also enjoy wheelchair dancing. That's me in a nutshell. Grant, did you want to go next? Yeah, cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Grant. Um, I'm a T12L1 incomplete paraplegic. Um, I guess me, I'm pretty active. Um, I do a bunch of different sort of stuff sport-wise and things like that. I guess cycling um, is a big thing for me. Um, I have um, hand bikes that I ride on the road um, and off-road as well. Um, I work for Push Mobility, so I help with, um, like, I guess, like, um, you know, all forms of adaptive equipment from day chairs and beach equipment and hand bikes and sports chairs and things. I have a couple of young kids that uh, are with me as well that I yeah um, look after and yeah, <laughs> I guess they're my kids. So <laughs> all that sort of stuff as a dad. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm pretty busy. I like doing a lot of different things. I'm pretty into uh, like uh, art sort of stuff, like painting, drawing when I get a chance and bits and pieces as well. So yeah, I'm just always on the go, I guess. There's not enough hours in the day, really. So that's a bit about me. Brilliant. Uh, Shantae, did you want to jump in next? Okay, I'm Shantae. I'm a C5 incomplete quad. Um, been for 12 years now. Um, my day-to-day -day life is looking after my animal farm, pretty much. So, like, I live on an acre. I own three dogs, two cats, two baby goats at the moment. Um, so I have to bottle feed them morning and night. And I also own two snakes. So most of my time is with my animals, just feeding, playing, looking after them. That's my, yeah, my exercise, really. I guess who we got next. Uh, Nas, did you want to jump in next? Thanks, Lockie. Yes, I will. Um, my name is Nas. I had a spinal injury diving into shallow water back in 1990. I know that's a long time, but just been trying to stay as active as I can and independent as I can. Um, use a manual chair and, you know, always um, trying to find out ways of doing things easier as in transferring and pushing the chair and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, always learning uh, all the time and um, using other people as examples too, you know, to sort of see what what uh, I could use for myself to make things easier. Brilliant. All right, Steve, did you want to finish this off? Oh, sorry, I'll keep going next, sorry. Yep, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, name is Stephen. 
I'm a teacher paraplegic um, and my injury was in 2010. Um, I currently work full time um, and has been for a couple of years. Um, so my time to um, sort of exercise has sort of been rather slim. Um, occasionally travel for work. Um, so a lot of my day to day movement is sort of moving around for work. Um, and, you know, um, after work, you know, um, I go out with sort of friends and catch up with people. Um, and on the weekends, I sort of like to go for, I guess, sort of pushes um, on like the bike track, just to sort of, I guess, to keep fit and, and keep moving. Great. Uh, Maya, did you want to jump in? Yeah. Hi, my name's Maya. I've had my spinal cord injury since I was six weeks old. Um, so I've been a wheelchair user for 23 years. Um, I started off using an electrical wheelchair full-time, but as I got older and more independent, I'm now a full-time manual wheelchair user. Um, I've played quite a few sports. I've played wheelchair, basketball, athletics, and now I just do um, a hand cycle recreationally. But because I drive and I work full-time, I am really focused on keeping fit and healthy so I can transfer and do my day-to-day -day activity. So I go to the gym three times a week and do stretching twice a week and I also have a dog so I spend a lot of my time out with my dog which is an exercise in itself because she's a greyhound. Brilliant thanks for sharing that everyone. Uh, just to make it a bit easier all I'll sort of we're going to go in that order with the questions and just sort of roll through it. Alrighty so everyone explained a, a bit about themselves. Um, and everyone sort of touched on the next question, which was um, what do you do on a daily basis to keep active? Um, if anyone feels like they want to elaborate on that um, within the next question. Um, and then are there, are there any day-to-day -day activities um, that you struggle with physically and why? Like for a long time, I used to struggle with transfers and then through hand cycling that really helped sort of um, improve that. Um, I used to struggle with swimming as well, and then I got in the pool and worked on that in particular. Um, Grant, is there any sort of, if you want to explain a little bit more about hand cycling and if there's any sort of day-to-day -day activities that you struggle with physically? Thanks, Lockie. Yeah, like, mm. I guess like I'm pretty fortunate. I'm pretty able, you know, I'm probably more able than what a lot of able-bodied people are kind of thing. So I don't really find that, you know, like I struggle with anything. I'm very fortunate for that, but um, I think it's sort of something that like, through my day-to-day -day life when I see you know other people like clients and things like that that come through um with work and things like that it just highlights to me the importance of staying fit staying healthy and being strong um and I guess like being as light as you can as well I think it's sort of something that like I'm quite fortunate that you know I am all of those sort of things but um I think it's sort of something that definitely you know I sort of see that you know I don't want to sort of let myself go or anything like that because uh, yeah life as it is is pretty easy compared to what I see you know with a lot of other people that perhaps don't look after themselves as well so yeah Brian, Georgina I think I forgot to mention earlier on that I am a T7 paraplegic uh, complete um, and I've been in the chair for 19 years so I just thought um, I'd show you some things that I do in the morning. I've got some props. These are some dumbbells. <laughs> so I do a bit of dumbbells in the morning. It's about a half an hour workout. I also use this caravan. And you'd be amazed how many exercises you can do with this. I was surprised. I have an exercise physiologist that I see every fortnight from Steps Neurological therapy services and um, I've got a routine that fits into a half an hour and that keeps me strong it keeps my upper back strong as well as you know pushing a manual chair your shoulders start to roll forward and so it's really important to um, strengthen your upper back muscles um, and muscles that you don't even know that they're there so I find that's quite good for posture as well and just to maintain health and fitness so um, I try to do it every morning, but probably three or four times a week. But um, that helps me as well with transfers, although I still use a slide board to transfer in most cases. And this is my slide board, in case no one knows what the slide board looks like. It's plastic, 
Um, most of you might think that they're made out of wood, but they're all different shapes and sizes and materials. So um, although I use a slide board and I can't transfer independently, I'm still able to transfer in a good way and with good technique and still lifting my bottom um, to avoid shearing and any damage um, or cause any friction to the bottom. So yeah, that's a little bit extra information about me. Great. All right, Chen, hey, did you feel like jumping in? Yeah. Um, mornings, I usually use voice just because it's a little bit easier for myself being a C5. Um, but generally nighttime, I slide board into bed myself. Um, and I guess my exercise is just around looking after the animals, trying to do as much as I can, trying to feed them myself, trying to... I don't know at the moment there's so much to do with them so with the animals like you know there's three dogs two cats so trying to feed everyone trying to make sure I can try to do it myself without carers there because sometimes you know I don't have carers around so I'm you know getting to the stage of moving exercise also I had um tendon transfers done back in 2018 I think it was so that has helped quite a bit with my um arm reaching as well so I can actually lift my arm up straight from that and also with my fingers I had tendon transfers with those so picking up things and lifting things has become a lot easier through the years um yeah, that's really about it. Like my exercise is just mainly around the house and the animals and trying to get as independent as I can possibly get. Yeah, nice. That must keep you busy. Nah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nas, did you feel like jumping in, mate? Yeah, just had to unmute um, myself. Thanks, Lockie. Um, yeah, pretty much my transfers in the morning, uh, it's just from bed to chair, uh, in, in and out of the car, is a bit of the same as well. But I've got, uh, it's not a slide board, but it's like a gap filler for the car that I use. Um, I'm, I'm happy to share with people. It's a bit of foam that pretty much um, is really lightweight and I can just stick it in between the car seat and my chair just to get rid of that gap so I don't have to, um, you know, do that full transfer across. Um, but I'm finding too, over the years, my shoulders are just playing up, rotator cuff injuries and, you know, you, your strength's not the same and all that sort of stuff. So I'm finding um, I'm, I'm using a slide board when I need to and I think that's a sensible thing for people to look at using when they need to, you know. It's really important because you don't want to keep... Um, you know, pushing your shoulders too much and even ending on the floor, which hasn't happened, thankfully, f for me for uh, a while. And, um, yeah, just try to avoid those things and put things in, in place when you need. Great. Thanks, mate. That was brilliant. Um, Steve, did you feel like jumping in, mate? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, with um, the first question, um, some of the things that I sort of physically struggle with. Um, there's not much I sort of physically struggle with in my day-to-day -day life, I don't think. I think I'm pretty well set up with the sort of equipment I use. Um, although I don't know if this is kind of off topic, but sometimes carrying things, because um, the work I've got like a bag I need to carry around and just making sure I can carry everything um, is sort of sometimes a bit of an issue. Um, with transfers, I'm able to sort of lift transfer sort of everywhere into the car in the on and off the bed and, and sort of everywhere else so um and then sort of put my chair in the car as well um so i'm well set up for that too brilliant all righty and then maya yeah so i completely self-transfer for every kind of transfer that i do in my day-to-day -day, and that's kind of why i make an effort to go to the gym to keep my body fit and healthy because I have found that especially when I go, don't go to the gym and I kind of 
do be a bit slack. I find that my transfers just get very messy and there's an increase of pools. And I found that definitely going to the gym has really helped with my ability to kind of help myself when I do have a fall. So when I'm getting in and out of the car, it is quite a big gap between my wheelchair and the car. And I do kind of sling myself using the um, the handle at the top of the car or the car door. And if I do have a fall, because of that strength in my upper body, I am able to pull myself up and get myself back in the chair without having to do a full floor to chair transfer. Fantastic. Alrighty, so we're going to move on to, um, we've already touched on it quite a bit, um, onto the sort of exercise aspect of the seminar. So um, even though everyone's mentioned, you know, that, that the sports they do and everything, um, does everyone want to sort of elaborate a little bit on um, what sports they do, sort of where they do it? For example, if you have you, if you do gym, do you, do you go home? Do you go out to gymnasium? Um, and if you do hand cycling, what do you do? Do you jump on the, do you have a sort of indoor setup or do you go riding outside? Um, and yeah, if everyone wants to touch on a little bit, a little, little bit about that. So for me personally, um, I hand cycle quite a bit. Um, I do two options. If it's raining, I can put um, my hand cycle on an indoor trainer. So it has a little motor on it and I can sort of simulate a sort of virtual program. I can run up and down hills, which is really, really convenient, especially when I'm short on time, I can get a good workout. Apart from that, I like riding outside, riding lots of hills because I really enjoy them and it challenges me a lot. And then I go to a gym, YMCA McLeod, which is set up really well for me. I find it's quite accessible for me and my needs. Um, and, you know, I jump onto the machines and I strap myself in a lot of the time so I have, because I don't have good balance. And then I can fully load the weight and uh, pull the power in. So, yeah, uh, Georgina. Yes, um, I used to go to a gym, but um, I've actually set up like a little substation in my living room where I do have my weights and my ferro bands, but I also have an arm cycle, which I find is good to swap day to day. Um, I usually watching the news or I put on some music to do the hand cycling because it can get quite boring <laughs> on its own. Um, so that's more convenient for me to have something at home. Um, compared to going to the gym. Um, I also forgot to mention I do um, dancing. Um, it's via Zoom on a Monday night with Dance and Roll. You may or may not have heard of, of that. And it's um, different sort of dance styles. Uh, there's Zumba. Um, you could have a um, session which is uh, more like jazz or hip hop or pop. So it's 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 right, quite enjoyable for me because I love music and I love dancing and it's very convenient. Um, I sit here where I am now and Monday 12 o'clock I'll be dancing for an hour which is really great exercise and it's enjoyable and it's something um, yeah, that fits my lifestyle. Um, and yeah, I think yeah, that's how I get my exercise in and I have had issues with my shoulders and I, um, luckily, I have a, a, a front wheel or a free wheel and also a power assist to help me on days that uh, I can't push the chair, um, I'm not strong enough to push the chair, worried about injuring it further. But I'm finding that by doing exercise more and more, I feel stronger and I feel that I'm able to push the chair on my own without any assistance or aids or equipment. Um, yeah, so I guess it's finding something that you enjoy and you know that you can stick to as a form of exercise. I think it's important because you can quickly, you know, stop exercising if it's something that you just hate. So it's it's something, you mentioned swimming, um, I think, Lockie. It's something that I love to do and I haven't been back in the pool. There was COVID, we weren't allowed, and it's just a matter of getting that motivation to go back and it's just booking a carer to come with me because I can't transfer onto the, the platform. I need assistance. So it's finding the support that you might need to get the exercise done. I think that's important. Um, so, yeah, that's what I do for exercise. Fantastic. Cool. So for me, I guess... Um... Like I've mentioned, hand cycling, 
Um, I ride on the road. Um, I also ride um, mountain bike trails as well. Um, and I guess that can involve, um, I have a hand cycles that are set up, which is great, like at home, like indoors to use um, with the Zwift training platform, which is really cool. I use that a lot, like most days, I guess, kind of thing for training, just because it's convenient um, and really easy. Um, but I also ride um, my off-road adaptive mountain bike um, most days or whenever I get a chance as well, even just using it to walk the dog. Um, it's great. Um, just getting out and about, um, I guess, much like Maya, I have a really active little poodle and yeah, she just loves to run like with the bike and she just literally just like zaps along with me and yeah, like I can go as quick as I want and she just, yeah, just runs along with the tongue hanging out and chasing and just doesn't want to stop. So that's great fun. I find it's really good. Like it's just a great headspace thing just to sort of, you know, like get home from work and just to sort of go out and be outside and doing something and doing something that I know, you know, my dog loves as well kind of thing is a really good and fulfilling thing. Um, but yeah, I guess just like, you know, a bit of everything, like I'm really out in a lot of different places and things like that. I, sometimes like I'll take my mountain bike um, to places like um, different places to ride that are further from home. I'll load it into the car um, and other times I'll ride it from home. Um, my road hand cycle, I usually just ride from home because I can go sort of anywhere with it. It's, you know, a really cool thing that you can be really independent with. So yeah, that's me, I guess. Fantastic. What about you, Nas? You still on mute, Nas? All right, maybe we can move um, on to when well, Nas is sorting out his technical issues. Um, Shante, do you want to say what you, what you do? Um, I will be starting to go back to neuro moves. Um, just because for me, exercise, if I'm out of the house, it's easier. When I'm in the house, I just get too distracted with the other billion things I have to do. So for me, I actually have to be out the house in a facility like neuro moves to get my exercise done. So going to be starting back there soon. Um, also, um, I've lost a lot of weight throughout the years. So that has helped with a lot of movement and just getting around and being able to do things for myself. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Great. Um, really I'm, I'm back, Lockie. I've got a, a new computer I'm using and uh, things are popping up on the screen and um, I'm having trouble getting rid of them, but I'm all sorted now. So, yeah, with me, uh, I've been playing wheelchair rugby for many, many years and part of that was training um, six days a, a week. And, you know, um, when we talk about training, that seems a lot, but it's not always, um, you know, chair training, for example. But, um, yeah, spent a lot of time... Um, um, doing laps and all that sort of stuff in the rugby chair. But other than that too, I mean, I, I look at, um, you know, when we go um, doing our daily running around, going from A to B, uh, I look at that as exercising, you know. So um, I don't see that as, you know, for example, shopping or, or um, you know, going to the doctor or physio. Um, getting from A to B, I see that as exercise as well. Uh, so that's, that's really important. Um, a lot of the daily active, activities that we do, um, I reckon, you know, people need to look at that as, as exercise and not just doing, um, you know, cleaning or the washing or the vacuuming, you know, do it in a positive way where uh, you're doing that as exercise as well. Um, yeah, so that's, Pretty much me. Um, I'm going to blame COVID. I hasn't, haven't been as active as I used to be. Uh, you know, I, I think it's really important uh, for myself and others as well. Uh, having a routine where three days a week that you're doing some sort of exercise, you know, that's either um, pushing your chair. It doesn't have to be in the sports chair. It could be just pushing around the streets or finding a local track 
around your house um, and going around there three times a week and making it a habit or a routine where it's not a chore. A lot of people, when they think about exercise, get to the stage where it could be seen as a negative and you don't want that, you know. It's always got to be positive when you're doing that sort of stuff. Well said, Naz. And what do you think, uh, Stephen? Yeah, just to follow on for what Naz was, Naz was saying, a um, couple of really good points there um, I'd like to echo. Um, first one is chores. If you do the chores, I guess, around your own house. Um, yeah, you end up, even just arm movement, if you've got to reach for stuff, um, you know, reach for stuff and put things away or, or, or bend over to get stuff out of the, um, you know, the cupboards or whatever, um, ends up being quite a lot of movement, especially if you do the house from back to front in a day. Um, yeah, it's quite a, I guess, a physically active day. Um, and the other thing um, you said at the end now is about, um, yeah, um, exercising sort of regularly um, and looking at it as positive. Um, something I do when for work, I've sort of got to drive up to Ballarat and Bendigo every so often. Um, and I, there's a couple of podcasts I listen to only when I'm traveling. Um, so you might be able to do the same for exercising when if you sort of get into a podcast or an audio book or something and you only listen to it when exercising um it might help you look forward to it a bit more if you really like the podcast um and it'd be something new and different because you're not i guess listening to it all the time um and that might help with the i guess the regular routine if you're looking to get into one um and that's sort of kind of what i've started doing um when i sort of go for the pushes on the the, the bike track near my house um yeah, sort of listen to sort of listen to something, whether it be a certain type of music or radio station every time, or um, you know, a, a podcast I've been listening to recently. Um, yeah, looking to do it, yeah, two or three times a week. Um, it's a bit of a struggle with the rain recently, um, but I'm sure it will clear up at some point and be able to get back there. Um, I am not currently playing any other sports though. I'm working full time, um, sort of leaves me with limited time for that. Um, but yeah, hoping to get to some sort of spot in the future um, is always the goal. Clever. So setting up a habit while you're doing exercise. I like that one. It's good. And what about you, Maya? Yeah, so I um, go to the gym a uh, minimum of three times a week. I go to a um, gym in Thomastown, um, and that's all really wheelchair accessible. They've even got a hand crank there, which is really good. It's a good plus when you join a gym and I also do strength and conditioning training at the next step which I find is really good because I get quite severe spasms and that can really impact my ability to move myself um and then yeah I've got a also got a tri ride that it's a hand sack that connects to my manual wheelchair which is really good because then I also go out with my family and my dog and it's kind of good way to spend quality time with people Brilliant. I love it combining exercise with um, socializing. It's a, it's a nice motivating way to get out. Um, so we've talked a lot about exercise and you know, what you do. Does everyone touch on um, why is exercise important to you and how does it help? I mean, um, for me personally, um, you know, I've sort of been in the chair for 12 years now and then um, got into a bit of rut years ago where I didn't, you know, just took it easy, ate a lot and then sort of transfer started becoming a bit harder. I noticed and I uh, didn't realize how much weight I was gaining, just sort of got quite comfortable. So I um, said to myself, I started going to start uh, getting into sport and doing a bit more exercise. And then um, eventually once I got into hand cycling and um, which is good cardio and that really helps keep the weight down. Um, like Grant was saying before about being lighter, that it really had a huge impact on me. Um, not only just making my transfers easier, making getting around easier and, they're therefore taking a lot of strain off my shoulders. And um, years ago, I have remember a story that I went to um, Hamilton Island, uh, what we're talking like seven years ago, and I didn't know how to swim back then. So I jumped in the water and I was holding on the deck and I couldn't get down and enjoy everything because I was just too scared. But then I went, went back a couple of years after, after I got into swimming and everything and then had a GoPro and then went down to the, you know, down to the coral reef and um, had a look at the fish and played with them. And I just thought just by doing exercise and getting around, it made such an impact on my lifestyle and quality of life. So for me, it's, that's one of the reasons why it's so important. It gets me out and enables me to do what I want. How about you, Georgina? 
I agree with everything that you said, Lockie, and it's the same for me as well. I found that, um, again, I don't want to blame COVID, <laughs> but um, even just the incidental exercise that you get uh, getting in and out of the car to go to work or to go wherever that you used to go prior to COVID, that is exercise. And because we weren't driving around much during that time, and then when we started to get back in the car and when everything, all the restrictions were listed, lifted, I found it quite difficult even just getting the, the chair in and out of the car because I disassembled it and I found that was really difficult. Um, so by doing exercise, whether it's gym or pushing a chair more, I find that it helps a lot. Your strength comes back and then getting the chair in and out is a lot easier. So. I find that's very important. Um, also transferring as well. Um, being strong, you're able to do the transfers in the proper way, not in the lazy way, but uh, sometimes do. Um, so I find that's very important. It also helps uh, with controlling my weight as well. I feel sluggish if I feel I haven't done enough exercise or I've eaten too much um, instead. So um, I think that helps maintain a good level. Um, yeah, so just being healthy all round makes me feel better generally. And it also helps me with um, my morning routine, keeps me in check in that way as well. It helps things move along quite um, well. So that's very important for me. Um, so yeah, that's... That's why I think we all should do some form of exercise, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, something is better than nothing. And it makes you feel really good. Thank you. I think Georgina has uh, really hit, hit the nail on the head pretty well there in terms of like, yeah, like exercise, like definitely just releases those endorphins. It helps make you feel good. I guess, you know, you feel good about, I guess, like looking good, feeling good, you know, being fit, being healthy, that type of thing. And, I think, you know, like it's something that's like often sort of said and I've heard it like from many people sort of before that doctors should pre uh, prescribe exercise rather than antidepressants. It's just like it's the simplest and like easiest thing, you know, like that you can do to make yourself feel good. And I guess it's just one of those things where it's, yeah, it's like to me, it's just simple. Like, I'm, you know, if I'm not active and not moving, you know, like I'm not happy really, you know, like I just would rather be doing stuff I can't handle just, you know, being stuck, you know, I guess like before I've had things like, you know, like long stays, like in hospital with pressure sores and things like that. And, you know, like literally, you know, like are we hanging off of like, you know, like a handle above the bed, you know, doing chin ups or something like that, just to sort of try and, you know, you know, stay active and be doing something because yeah, when you're moving, things are good. And I guess like the more you do it, the more addictive it becomes and the better you feel. And it's just something like it's, I guess like it can be hard to start, but you've got to start somewhere as well kind of thing. And it only gets easier. And I guess, it only gets easier, but like, I guess like it still hurts, you know, in the same sort of way, or when you're pushing yourself, you know, you just get better at doing it kind of thing. So, but yeah, I think moving is really, really important and it makes you feel good. I was going to add to that. That's a great point, Grant and Georgina as well. Uh, for your mental health, you know, I mean, that's one of the benefits of exercising. I know, you know, I talked about, exercising where it gets to a stage if you have to do it or you look at it as you have to do it becomes a negative and you know you you hate um sort of getting into it but every time you do exercise or you finish your routine you feel fantastic afterwards and and that's that's what you want to get out of it you know and uh, it's really great for mental health you know because in a way it's a bit of a distraction you know you're doing something positive um, and it's good for your mental health and your, your physical fitness overall. Um, one thing I was going to mention before as well, like when I'm feeling a little bit lazy and you can't get, you know, you can't be stuffed getting into your rugby chair or getting onto your hand cycle or whatever, I've got like a course I set up at home. So you're probably going to laugh, but um, I've got a staircase and a kitchen bench. So that's my course. 
I do figure eights around them and each lap, I call it a lap, takes me about 30 seconds. So I set the timer and do three sets of 10 minutes, for example. And that's when I'm feeling lazy. I don't have to jump in the car. I don't have to transfer into another rugby chair or go to the gym. Uh, I do that at home, you know, um, and it's, it's my way of telling me I've got no excuse. I don't have to go anywhere that's, uh, that's specialised. I can do it just by creating like a course around the house somewhere. Brilliant. Very, very clever, Naz. I, uh, I really like that one. It's, um, you know, it's sort of a, it's a point that um, there's lots of big exercise we can do. Get out and go for rides and bikes and um, get in a rugby chair or we can just go home and roll around home and utilise that. Mm. And, uh, yeah, how about you, yourself, Shantae? Um, I guess for me, it's just because it has been like 12, nearly 13 years and I was 11 when I did have my injury. So I was quite young and I was growing at the time. So for me, it's just getting really sore, I guess. Um, that's why exercise is really good for me. Like I've noticed the more I exercise, the less I'm sore. Because I have been in a, you know, grown in the chair, like my spine at the bottom is bent. So it's not quite straight anymore. Um, so I guess like moving and exercising and doing things for me helps the pain a lot. So that's about it really. Like it's just more for pain management, the exercise, just because I have, well, I was 90 kilos, now I'm like 45 kilos. So it's a big wow. weight drop as well. Um, so you lose a lot of muscle as well as fat. But, yeah, just a lot of pain. That's why exercise is quite good. Yeah, brilliant. Never thought about it from that point of view. Um, it can definitely help with a lot of pain relief. I've seen a lot of research and stuff out there. So thanks for adding that one. That's great. Um, and why is exercise important to you, Steve? Um, I don't think I have much else to add on top of everyone else. Um, yeah, the I guess the two major things I had um, just to follow on from Shantae was, um, yeah, more of a maintenance. Yeah, more of a maintenance way to go about things um, to maintain, um, you know, maintain weight and sort of keep my weight in check. Um, but also, um, you know, I think when your muscles are sort of fit, um, and you're naturally used to moving a bit more, it sort of keeps sort of the pain away. Um, and I find that there's less of the times you just sort of get these weird, I oh know sometimes as you, as you age, you get these weird aches and pains sometimes. And I find that if you're regularly sort of working out to a schedule, um, you just sort of get less of them. Um, and the other big one, which other people have mentioned is sort of mental health. Um, yeah, exercising, sort of getting out. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just so important for mental health. Um, especially if, um, yeah, you sort of, you can um, sort of leave the house and, and do things out of the house as well. Um, yeah, all sorts of reasons. It just sort of gets you moving, it clears your mind and, and um, yeah, it's, it's just really good for that all around health lifestyle. Brilliant. And uh, how does it help you, Maya? Why is it important to you? Yeah, so... Exercise um, is quite important to me, especially in my day-to-day -day life. Um, it really helps with my um, muscle spasticity. So that's kind of one of, one, one of the main important reasons why I keep fit. But also, um, again, for my mental health, I'm quite an anxious person. And I found that keeping fit and keeping to a routine and even just that incidental exercise, whether it be going out with my dogs um, has really helped with my anxiety. So that's another reason why I keep fit, but also so I can go outside with my dogs and spend some time with them because I live with my parents and they live on nine acres. So so I can go out and be with them. That's another reason why. Yeah, fantastic. And that's actually um, a really good point that you said with these spasms. I, um, being a, myself being a T2 paraplegic, I get... Um, get a bit of spasms. I used to have a lot when I had a recent sort of hospital accident. Um, 
but I get in the ground and do lots of stretches before I go riding and stuff. And found over time that makes a huge difference. So it doesn't throw my body around, throw me out of the chair. I mean, every spasm is different, but yeah, so that's definitely benefit as well. Alrighty. So we're going to move on to transfers. Um, and it's important to note that transfers, as people have already mentioned, the transfers are different to everyone. So, you know, you've got options like get a hoist transfer, you've got a slide board um, that if no one knows what that is, you can wedge a slide board in between underneath your bum and you can sort of slide over to maybe it might be the car, maybe it might be the couch or the bed or anything like that. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to go around to the panel and sort of ask everyone, so can you confidently transfer? Um, like, how do you do it? Do you do it with the, do you do the lift transfer? Do you sort of just lift off your chair, grab the other side and sort of push down the ground and move across? Or I guess, how do you do it? So Georgina, yourself? As you saw before, you saw my slide board. <laughs> but um, I pretty much use it for most transfers. So that is um, on and off the bed, um, on and off uh, to get in the car. Um, if I was to go on the couch, I'd use it as well. Where I don't use it is um, on my toilet and shower bench. They're both padded and I do have a rail that I grab to assist with my transfer. So I don't use a slide board for those two transfers. Um, I find for me, uh, I'm always blaming the fact that women have shorter arms than men, so it's a lot easier for men and men are naturally stronger. Um, but I know there is lots and lots of women out there that can transfer without a board and um, I wish I could do that, but it's something that I've always used a slide board and I'm comfortable with it. So long as I have the right technique and that I am lifting my bum off as much as possible off the actual slide board and, and not just shearing across. So it's important to have the right technique. Um, and I feel safe with a slide board. I don't have to stress about the possibility of falling off. But um, I do. I did have a go at trying to learn how to transfer without a board. And I probably tried that too late in my years or in my spinal injury life. Um, I probably should have done it a lot earlier, but I still feel that I am in a way preserving my shoulders by using a slide board. Um, and I just don't want to go backwards. So if everything's working fine, then I'm happy. And the physiotherapists are happy as well. That's it. Cool, so I guess for me, I, yeah, like I'm pretty fortunate in the fact that I'm pretty fit and strong and I can, you know, transfer sort of probably like really from anywhere. I can floor transfer, uh, you know, both up, down, that type of thing. And I guess like a lot of that is, you know, like I'm a low, low level injury. So like, I guess, you know, I have really good core and things like that, which is helpful. Um, but I think, you know, I think back to even when I was first injured and things like that, you know, like learning to floor transfer and things like that, like at first it was hard. Um, but it's just something that, you know, I think, you know, like there'll be lots of different things that are hard for people that it's just, you know, if you work at it, you know, and if you want to do it, you know, like it's important to sort of try and to me, you know, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't imagine, you know, I guess like I'm very independent and want to do things all on my own and not everyone has that choice. Um, but I guess, you know, like I like to, you know, like retain every bit of independence that I can and, just to know that like if you know like if I you know like fall out or if I'm stuck somewhere or whatever you know like I can just deal with it myself kind of thing um but yeah I guess um you know you just have to do what's right for you and what works for you that type of thing but you know if there's something that you know like you want to achieve and things like that like I think it's really important to you know to try you know like and you know like use people around you to help and things like that you know like whatever it is that you want to sort of perhaps like learn at first is probably not going to be able, you know, able to be achieved right away. But if you work at it, you know, and want it, you know, like I think it's something that, you know, everyone can achieve. But for me, I find that it's, you know, really important to be able to sort of, you know, I guess pick myself up and move around, you know, as freely as I can. So. Yeah, brilliant. It's important to have that sort of, strong motivation to want to do it as well makes a difference and whatever you want 
could be different for everyone. So setting your own goals in that regard is important too. And um, what about you, Nas? Yeah, so with me, uh, I mentioned before, um, I used to transfer independently before, you know, I'm a quad no triceps and all that sort of stuff. So um, in and out of bed and, and the car never used to have the need. But over the years, I think uh, as the shoulders just get um, sore and, um, you know, you lose a bit of function, um, in and out of the bed, um, I, was, I still don't use uh, um, a slide board. But there's times where I, I do, um, and that that's just depending on how I feel on, on the day, I guess. And um, but get, getting in and out of, out of the car, um, uh, I've, I've got this bit of foam as I mentioned. Um, so I sit that um, in between the chair and um, the wheelchair and the car's um, seat, and it's about the same height as my cushion. So you know it, it's. Um, in a way, it works uh, similar to a slide board. So you can um, creep across and know that if you're in between, as in uh, in between the transfer, you can sit on the, the foam bit and know you're not going to sink, you're not going to fall fall into that gap because once you're in that gap, I think it's hard to get out of it. And um, yeah, that's worked really well for me. You know, I mean, I try to learn and see what other people are doing as well. And I just use what I have to now. Uh, a lot of people um, don't like using a slide board because, you know, uh, the more equipment you, you got, you you feel like um, you've got to have that around you or with you all the time. Um, but if you need to, you need to. You know, that's why I look at it now. You're yeah, clever. I've never heard of the... Um... Foam in between the chair, I like that. Yeah, it's I actually a... got a, uh, it'll be worthwhile to share uh, a picture of it. 100%, yeah, if you could go grab that at the end maybe or whenever you yeah. get a chance, yeah, that'd be great for us to to see that. Clever. Yeah. And how, how about you, Shante? How do you um, how do you maneuver yourself around? Um, well, it's generally in the morning, just off and on the commode. It's just a lot easier. Um, and I guess... Um, like, because of my weight drop and through COVID, I did stop physio. So I wasn't slideboarding and exercising as much. So my muscles from being able to lift 10 kilos is now to lift two kilos. It's dropped a lot. Um, but at nighttime, I try slideboard into bed and at first it was all like when I first started doing it again it was really hard um took me like 10 minutes but now it takes me like not even five to be able to get in to bed so I don't know it's just progress I think um throughout the years um COVID didn't really help at all <laughs> with anything um but also personal stuff as well didn't help um but yeah just yeah if I don't move enough I I definitely feel sore just because I've grown in a wheelchair it's just my body's just so used to sitting um yeah if I don't move definitely a lot sore than I should be at my age yeah well said um definitely within the, the life of a spinal injury or wheelchair user, situations definitely do change. Like your function may change. You may have, unfortunately, more accidents um, that can result in changes. And yeah, it's important to sort of reassess the situation um, and then find another process and way to tackle things. Um, and taking it step by step, like you and uh, Grant mentioned that, you know, really sort of setting the right goals and then slowly building your way up, you know, not trying to get to the end, but building up there. I think is quite important. And uh, what about you, Stephen? Sorry. Um, yeah, with my transfers, um, I'm yeah sort of able to sort of lift transfer basically everywhere, um, in and out of bed, car, couch, um, toilet, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I sort of focus on my um, before I started working full time. I went to the gym so sort of three or four days a week. Um, and sort of focus of that was sort of building strength. Um, so I sort of have the confidence and 
um, yeah, sort of can transfer everywhere. Um, and it's, yeah, I guess really important for independence that, um, yeah, you've got a, a transfer routine that works for you, um, however that transfer routine is, um, and sort of whatever support you need to, to make the transfers happen. Um, yeah, so it, it, it sort of feels really good to have a setup, um, setup that, you know, works for me. Brilliant. And how about yourself, Maya? How do you transfer? Yeah, so I transfer completely independently. I don't use any equipment um, for any of my transfers, but if I am transferring from um, floor back to my chair, I do use my seat cover, so my seat, sorry. So I take my seat off and I usually put it in front of my um, casters because I am quite short and um, the height from the floor to the backrest um, is a bit high for me. So I use that to the wheelchair doesn't move um, and then I pull myself up instead of doing the um, kind of like the when you do the, the lift I kind of pull instead that's a clever maneuver I like that never heard of that before yeah. Um, yeah so I guess we could quickly um conscious of time so if anyone has to get moving soon or anything on the panel just let me know and um we can try and race and finish it up but it seems like everyone's got a lot to offer at the moment so we might just keep sort of cracking on um has there been it for everyone out, for anyone in here on the panel um has there ever been a point where you've either struggled to do a transfer um you've been in pain um and any reason why and have you done anything to resolve this i guess so just to add to myself personally i um, went through quite a hard accident about two years ago um where i lost all my muscle and everything so for me um that was quite difficult i couldn't even lift myself i had to go back to being hoisted um so what i did then um is i did a lot and a lot of gym i went through rehab again royal talbot um and just worked hard at gym and i had an arm crank bike and just worked hard and hard and hard it took time and took a lot of work, but I managed to get my transfers back to being fully independent. Now I can do ground to chair transfers again. And um, so for me, that was a huge aspect of my life why exercise made a big difference. Um, Georgina, have you ever had a point in time that's affected you? Yes, I've had plenty of um, injuries on my neck and shoulder, or not so much injuries, like, but like I've either strained it um somewhat and I find that has happened generally if I've rushed getting my wheelchair out of my car or into the car and holding action with one arm and not taking things slowly and thinking about the process um I've caused some injury but having had to go to physios uh, a few times and I guess stopping the exercise, um, I found it quite interesting that when I went to see the physio therapist and getting some treatment done, they actually said, don't stop exercise. You have to continue, but in a different way, but, or use lighter weights, but it's, it's bad to stop completely. Um, and sometimes restarting the exercise can help. Um, but yeah, and that obviously affects the transfers and you can feel the pain. And so you have to either take uh, painkillers or have the creams to help with the pain. Um, but yeah, it's just knowing your limits and not overexerting yourself is important. Um, and just taking care day to day of what you're doing and concentrating so that you don't cause injury to yourself. And um, yeah, so that's what's happened to me in the past. Yeah, I don't really have a great deal to add to that one there. I've been pretty fortunate, I guess, in the fact that I haven't really had situations where I have been, you know, unable to transfer or anything like that. So I probably don't really have a lot to add to this one just at the moment there, guys. Sorry. No, not at all. Definitely affects everyone, everyone differently. But just to add to the question, I guess, if there's a... A point where transfers were a little, maybe a little bit harder, like, you know, maybe you had a bit more weight or something like that. You could still do them, but it was just like a bit more tiring on the shoulders. Was there a point for you, Gran, or you've been pretty sweet? I've been pretty lucky, really. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't say that I've really had anything like that. I'm sorry. So, yeah, like I said, I'm sorry. pretty fortunate in the fact yeah. that, um, yeah, 
relatively fit and able, I guess, in that sort of sense, which I'm thankful for, but I work hard to, you know, to achieve, I guess, as well. Yeah, fantastic. That's a good, strong motivation to work hard. Um, what about you, Naz? Well, with me, like, yeah, there's been a few times where I've been tired or, you know, haven't done the transfer. It's usually uh, getting in and out of the car. Um, because I, I don't sort of lift across the wheel getting into the, the, uh, the car seat. I'm pretty much dragging my bum across. You know, um, pushing and doing it that way. And sometimes the chair's moved away. And when the chair moves away from me, it just puts everything out of whack, you know. So if I try to continue, um, probably 50% of the time, I'll make it across, you know, and just be as careful as I can. But sometimes the chair's moved away that much that when I try to move any further, the chair just it goes further and further away. So slowly, slowly, I, I find myself falling onto the floor. But when that happens, I, I pretty much just got to freeze and stop the transfer. And hopefully there's someone going past. So usually I've got to wait five or 10 minutes and it's pretty tiring, but you know, there's nothing more I can do. So I just try to catch someone going past and just yell out and say, excuse me, can you just give me a hand? And I just get them to make sure they stand behind the chair, make sure it doesn't move away any further and I complete the transfer. So, uh, and I found out the hard way because when I try to continue uh, the transfer, I know the chair's going to move away further and I end up on the floor. So uh, what I do is just stop whenever that happens now and just wait for someone to go past. And people are fantastic, you know, it's no, no problem for people to give you a hand holding the chair, making sure it doesn't go further away from you. Yeah, clever, Naz. I think it's important to add to that. that um, well, yeah, I yeah, wouldn't call it clever. I think it's just learning the hard way. No, sorry. <laughs> what, I, what I meant to say is it's clever that, um, you know, even though sometimes struggles, um, transfers might be hard, you manage by using your voice, you know. Yeah. That's why I say the super, right. one of our superpowers is about being in a chair is yeah. – um, communication if we can communicate what we need to people that could, that's a way to be independent as well yeah for sure yep Stephen, was there an ever time i'm oh, sorry shante was there ever time um where you sort of your transfers changed and you struggled a little bit um definitely when i was heavy uh, um transfers were a lot harder now they're a lot easier it's just like it doesn't feel like i'm moving really anything anymore um and I guess like when I get sick, um, it becomes a lot harder. So like pneumonia is a big thing for me. Um, so whenever I come down with that, it's just like there's no energy to do anything really. So that's like one of the biggest things that I deal with. And then once that hits you, um and then you bounce back from that. Do you have a certain process that you go through or somewhere you reach out I just out have to? to slowly get back into it. Um, I can't just push myself straight away because whenever I do get pneumonia, I drop weight real quick. I, you know, everything, my whole energy level just drops in general. So then I just have to slowly just start building it back up again. So, yeah. That's great. You take your time and let your body get um, readapted. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Yeah. Steve? Um, yeah, much the same as Grant. Um, I've sort of, yeah, been pretty, um, yeah, sort of healthy health-wise for sort of a long period of time. Um, and it's been a quite a while since I've, I've been in a situation where I've sort of struggled with, with transfers. Um, in the past, when I have been sort of unwell for a period of time, um, when I've gotten well again, I've sort of really focused on building health um and sort of building building just sort of strength um to be able to transfer sort of across um yeah um and i think that um the building the strength and building the um ability to transfer is is sort of good but i think it's also about developing i guess good technique as well um and that's one thing when i was in more talbot that was sort of the focus of what we did um especially with the floor to chair transfers um that they taught in talbot back then a lot of it was on, I guess, technique. Um, and if your transfer technique is really good, 
um, and works for you, then you'd need less strength to, to make the jump. Um, yeah, so um, I think the other thing to focus on in transfers when you're develop them, developing them is making sure the, the technique you've got is really good um, and that's going to minimise the amount of, I guess, strength and, and sort of force you need um, to move. Brilliant. Um, your technique is super, super important. It makes a big difference in terms of saving your shoulders and, um, yeah, making transfers so much easier. How yeah, about you, Mayo? Was there, I'm oh, sorry, you saying, Steve? So I was also going to jump in and say also more reliable. Um, if the technique's really good, then it'll be the same result every time. Um, if it's, um, yeah, which is sort of, yeah, which is good because if you, if it's not reliable, sometimes you overshoot or undershoot. That just makes it a bit harder to predict. So exactly. And just to add to that, yeah, that um if you have a good transfer technique and you're strong enough to do a good clear transfer, it'll sort of reduce the chance of pressure sores and landing on your bum in a bad spot as well. That just can make it have a huge impact on you. So Maya, was there ever a time where you struggled to have transfers or they were a little bit more difficult? Yeah, so definitely in COVID, um, when we were all at home in lockdown, um, I did find that my transfers were not as clean as what they usually were, um, especially going from my chair into the shower, because um, also I was using a different commode then. Um, but yeah, so and when I wasn't going to my physical therapy and, and gym and things like that, because it was closed and just doing home workouts, I definitely found that my falls increased. Um, so yeah, that was a difficult time where my transfers were very different. Nice. And what, what did you do to sort of, um, I guess, rectify that, if you will, sort of help progress from that? Yeah, so I just kind of just um, made sure that I was having some more time out of my chair and on, on the floor and doing some of that stretching because it was really just um, the spasms, my spasms that were really impacting me because if I, I found that it was my legs were just kind of being like dead weight, just pulling me down when I was trying to get across. Um, so, yeah, just kind of making sure that my legs are nice and loose before I'm, and my hips um, before I'm transferring. That was what they were beneficial. Brilliant, well said. Um, and just to add to that, I guess, um, with me, with a lot of the hand cycling I do um, over time, sometimes I do some hard Ks and some steep hills. Um, so for me, years ago, I had a bit of a niggle in the shoulders and then my physio recommended to do a lot of exercises like rotator cuff exercises and, few things like wall angels so setting your shoulders in a good position and sort of rearing them up um he did that and it saved me from that niggle and then from there he said if you do that each day before you ride it'll make a it'll make a huge difference for you and you will re massively reduce the chance of getting shoulder injury so ever since then i've done it pretty much every day um you don't have to do every day if you're not training like i am um but it, it, it makes a huge difference. It gets your shoulders and your joints primed for a lot of the um, exercise that you do throughout the day. All righty. And so just to add to that, um, even though you may struggle with transfers and you're not in the rehab setting, there is a lot of options out there for you. Um, so, for example, getting in touch with a good exercise physiologist and setting up a program with them or a good physio, um, some of them may be able to come to your house or they may have a setup that you can go to and sort of help work on your transfers and sort of set your goals. And then also AQA um, have introduced um, a program called Skills for Independence. And they've, um, they've been working for a fair few years now. Um, and they, they help individually with separate wheelchair skills and then transfer skills as well. And um, we've got um, Lani Bell here, uh, Lani Ball, sorry, um, um, as one of the panelists just to come and talk a little bit about Skills for Independence. Take it away, Lani. Thanks, Lucky. Yep. Yeah, so if you're wanting to uh, maybe increase your ways of becoming active, whether that be purposely going out for, for a role or you're wanting to maybe do some more incidental exercise, it could be, you know, walking to the shops, walking your dog, which I hear people are doing. Uh, it could be going to a sporting, sporting game. Um, but in order to do those sorts of things, you're needing to use your, your wheelchair skills. And if it's something that you're maybe feeling a bit rusty um, about or you're wanting to gain some more confidence in negotiating certain obstacles that you could come across, such as um, 
A big one is curbs and steps, maybe traveling across different types of services like gravel or grass. Then coming to a wheelchair skills session will give you that opportunity of joining. Um, we usually have around about two to, to four people in a session. And uh, the session's led by a wheelchair user. Sometimes we even have two involved, where it gives you the opportunity in a safe, supported environment to um, learn best technique um, so you can look after your shoulders and conserve your energy for the day. Uh, and also, you know, give you the opportunity to practice steps and curves, um, also ramps, transfer skills, so you can build up that experience with practice and support so next time when you're out in the community you're you're feeling more comfortable getting those doing those skills and getting out and about so we've got standalone uh, wheelchair skill sessions and then we've also got some residential courses where we incorporate wheelchair skills and transfers and, and other topics as well. But if you're wanting some more information um, about any of these things, give the AQA office a call and you can have a, a chat to any of us and we can let you know when we're running our next lot of um, courses and sessions. And we'd be more than happy to answer your questions and, and uh, try and tee you up with a particular date. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Lani. We really, That's really okay. appreciate you no coming problem. along and explaining a bit about it. Um, just a bit of a testimony myself. Um, I've uh, done a few wheelchair skills sessions. I've been part of the camp. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, they have camps away as well that you can bring There's multiple people um, come along. We stay away for it could be a week or a weekend. And um, it's more than just transfers. It's talking about all sorts of issues that uh, may arise, arise sorry, um, during the, your life of a spinal injury. Um, and now they've sucked me in to be part of the team. <laughs> All righty. So just to add on, add on to that one as well, um, as everyone's touched on really, really well, there's a lot of equipment out there that can sort of help with transfers. And everyone's already mentioned slide boards, hoists, but there's also other things on top of that. So, for example, a large um, padded adjustable shower chair. So there's firm shower chairs and there's padded shower chairs that can go up and down, um, not electronically, well, they may be, but um, they make it easier to have, to have it at the right height so that when you jump into the shower, you don't have to struggle and do a big transfer and slip when it might be wet. Um, there's even commodes. So you can just, you know, if, I, I don't know, to be sure if everyone knows what a commode is, probably do go into the rehab setting, but it's a large padded wheelchair that has a hole in it. So you can go straight over the toilet or have a bucket. And you can use um, do your bowels in that and then jump into the shower after. Um, and then also a big one that I found over time is finding the right um, sort of firmness of the couch. So I don't have a, early on, I didn't have a, I had a soft couch and I really struggled with that. So I got a bit of a firmer couch that I still can get comfortable and don't get pressure sores on. And that makes it a lot easier for me. Um, is there anyone, anything else that anyone can recommend it makes that life, their life that just that little bit easier, just like Nas's sort of clever foam, foam trick. Um, I've got an innovative one um, that um, I haven't seen anywhere else. Um, and it's something I used to sort of reach things. Um, basically what I got is a long brim handle. Um, like a plastic brim handle and cut the end of the, the brush part off and like put like a plastic hook on the end of it, just like yeah. screwed it in. Um, and that's been um, really helpful over the years just to reach things. Mm. Um, you know, with arms sort of outstretched, it can almost almost reach the ceiling. Um, so just like if you're in a house where um, sort of other people are and frequently stuff is stored higher up or, um, you find often things if fraction out of reach, like if they're under the couch or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to store somewhere. Um, yeah, and it can get quite a distance um, when you reach it. Absolutely brilliant. And even um, even though I'm a keen hand cyclist and I like to sort of um, pedal myself, there's a lot of other options out there as well. If you can get in a hand cycle, but you think, oh, I won't, I wouldn't even last. 10 meters um there's also power assist options out there as well um and i deal with push mobility quite a bit 
Um, and they've got a lot of options like that if you wanted to, and Maya has one as well. Um, did you want to elaborate on that, Debbie Grant? Yeah, I think so for sure. Thanks for the chance to mention about that, Lockie, because mm -hmm. I guess, um, you know, electric assist bikes in the able-bodied world, you know, like are a really big thing um, these days. And I guess it is the same, um, you know, for people living with a disability, um, like all of us as well. Um, we have so many different things just, I guess, that are available in the space of, you know, like, I guess, like a hand bike and things like that that people can get into, you know, like easily, I guess, um, like in terms of a transfer and things like that. Um, but we have options, um, you know, for people, um, you know, that are quads, like with limited hand function, um, you know, through to someone that, you know, like I guess, you know, has still a lot more hand function and arm function. Um, and I think it's honestly like one of those sort of things that like, you know, a regular, uh, what we sort of almost refer to as like an analog, um, you know, like hand bike where there's no electric assistance or anything like that these days is, look, it's it's brutal to try and ride. Like it's hard work, like, um, you know, not going to sugarcoat it or anything like that. It takes years to be able to get strong and, you know, enjoy it and things like that. But, um, you know, I sell lots of different attachments um, which basically transform um, you know, a person's day chair um, really quickly and easily. Um, even for someone who's a quad with limited hand function, um, you know, to be able to attach to and get in themselves. So once they're in their chair, you know, for the day, that type of thing, they can literally just roll up to a hand bike attachment, um, clip it onto their chair. And then with electric assistance, they can then go and ride it. And it's, it's like a really big sort of thing. Like I know, just relatively recently, like a little bit of an anecdote. I have a customer that was badly hurt um, in a motor vehicle and car accident from a few years ago. And immediately, like post that accident, um, he got a hand bike um, for the road, you know, wanted to ride that and things. And he had some complications um, with medical issues and things. And he's just not able to ride um, like the hand bike um, on the road. Um, and he's gained like a bunch of weight and he was sort of really feeling pretty down about it and, you know, just really struggling to find ways, you know, to lose the weight. Um, he's relatively recently gotten um, an electric assistance sort of attachment for his wheelchair. Um, he literally goes out like nearly every night of the week and rides it between 15 and 30 Ks. He's seeing weight like literally just like fall off of himself. And it just, it's a massive part of his identity back, you know, like seeing him out, like riding along the beach, you know, with his friends and things like that. And like, yeah, it's, it's a massively empowering thing, you know, and I guess like really cool for us to see like as an equipment provider, because like, you know, like I know it and I get it and understand it and things like that. And he rang me, um, you know, like the first night after he'd picked it up, like outside of hours, like working hours and things. And I answered the call because I, you know, I know him relatively well. And I just wondered if something wasn't quite right. And he rang me and yeah, like it was just like, you know, in tears of joy, just like happy and so thrilled that, you know, like he had this piece of equipment that, you know, was allowing him, he'd been out and ridden 30 Ks like on his first ride and things like that. And he wouldn't be able to do that like on a regular, um, you know, but, bike without the assistance but he's still going out and he's getting you know fitness and doing things and losing weight and you know his goal now is you know basically to get to a point where he is actually able to ride um, the other bike that he has that doesn't have electric assistance and things like that um, which is great but I know you know like for myself like you know having an electric mountain bike and things like it's a massive part of my identity back as well I can go out and ride with friends and things like that but the use of like, I guess, like these products that have, um, you know, assistance and things like that there isn't cheating or anything like that. It's only cheating the system. You know, you're just doing things that, you know, might not normally be able to be done, but yeah, it's so good. And there's so many different things, you know, you don't have to be doing it, you know, at a crazy competitive level or anything like that. It's just literally about getting out and feeling good, going out with your dog, going out with your kids, going to places where you, you know, like normally wouldn't be able to go or be able to do. Like I said, it's cheating the system. It's cool. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. It's it's quite an enabler, isn't it? You know, it's um, going back to that building, progressively building, you know, instead of just trying to jump into the deep end and maybe getting a hand cycle and riding up a hard hill, 
building your way up through here, the power assist, just rolling in the flats. And, you know, it's not for everyone as well to be able to just go on the road and train that hard. So having a power assist might enable you and just, you know, like for me personally, I love riding my bike because I love feeling the wind in my face and going fast downhill. I really, really enjoy it. And, you know, there may be a point that's like down the future where my shoulders may go in a bit older. I can use a power assist to be able to do that, so, you know, so, and it's not just for hand cycles. There's plenty of options out there. So even they maybe push assist while you're in a chair. So if you want to do a bit of exercise and then you get caught out and go, oh, I'm too exhausted to get home. If you have a power assist, that can take you home. So you can push out one direction, then roll home easy. So yeah, there's plenty of options out there. So Maya, you um, noticed with your hand cycle that you have, like, does that connect to your chair or is that like a power assist or how does that work? Yeah, so mine is a power assist and it connects to my chair, um, which is really good because I can go out with my family and I can um, go out for however long they go out for. My mum's quite a long distance runner, so I can go out with her and I don't have to worry about my shoulders going because I do have quite, I do have shoulder pain that does flare up sometimes and I'm only 23, so I do want to preserve my shoulders for quite a long time so I'm not, you know, 30, 40, 50, and having to go back into a um, powered wheelchair. Um, so it's really good because I can keep myself fit. And also I can go with my dog, who's a greyhound, so she's quite fast. So I don't have to worry about trying to keep up with her. Um, and yeah, it's, and also because I, I live on quite a hill. So when it is muddy or raining like today, I can just increase the speed and I'm not having, I'm not getting bogged because I've got that power that will kind of break up the, the the dirt and the mud yeah. sounds like that's something i'm after to get as well because i'm looking at getting a dog like a big german shepherd and don't think i'll be able to do it with my hand cycle lying down recumbent wise <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we're going to do is we're going to get to the q a point um so i encourage everyone or any any of the uh, the attendees if you've got any questions um feel free to write them down and i'll just ask them out to the panel members and then with the panel members, feel free to jump in um, and then answer it if you think you've got the best answer. We, can all, uh, we all have something different to offer. So from Lindsay, oh, Grant's already answered that. I use a Klaxon wheelchair. You can just say it on here if you want, um, Grant. I use a Klaxon wheelchair attachment. It's a pretty useless colour. I think it says pretty useless outdoors. At the end. Oh, Lindsay, yeah, you... outdoors, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, just yeah about to type to that one. I just saw it there, and I just wondered um, perhaps if um, the equipment provider um, has given you adequate training and um, set up with it because Claxon do some really good equipment. It's not something that we sell, but I've seen their equipment and things there. And often, you know, I guess there's a lot of equipment that gets out there, and um, people haven't been provided like with great sort of help or you know adequate training and things like that with it. But um, yeah, I. Would, so just perhaps um, looking at that avenue there because, um, yeah, they make good gear and things like that and it should work well for you there. So, yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for that. Um, if there's any more questions um, for the panellists, please, or for the attendees, please write it down and we'll, I'll just spit it out in the open and um, we can all answer it. Otherwise, um, just got a few questions to roll out to everyone. Um, is there any exercise transfer activity um, that you would like to, oh no, sorry, next one. Um, if there's a one thing message that you could send to everyone in terms of exercise or transfers that you would recommend for a wheelchair user, in, what would that be? So for me personally, um, when I got into hand cycling, that was, you know, that absolutely changed my life. Like I started doing some bigger challenges like riding up mountains and a few things, but Honestly, every day I wake up, I'm just looking forward to jumping in my bike and whether it be training hard or whether it be riding, it's just become a strong passion of mine. So the one thing I'd recommend is for if you, in terms of exercise, find something you really enjoy that you really want to do, not just go to the gym and think of it as a chore, but something that sort of may wake you up and go, oh, I'm really looking forward to doing that today. Um, yeah, the, uh, Georgina, did you want to say if there's anything in particular yeah, I totally that you'd agree. like to offer? Yes, look, I totally agree with you. Is finding something that you really love to do and enjoy. That's the only way you're going to stick to the exercise. That I truly believe in that. And I think, um, I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned the 
the importance of stretching as well before after, and after exercise. Mm -hmm. I find that when I haven't done those, that um, I feel a little bit um, niggly. And so um, definitely recommend stretching. Um, and that, that can be part of your exercise routine and it does feel good to stretch. Next. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, look, I, I think um, there's a few things um, that are probably worth noting with that, but just like something like literally like as simple, like it's just pushing up in your chair, like just literally like it's pressure relief, you know, and at the same time, you know, like it's actually, you know, really good, you know, like for your arms, um, shoulders and things like that there as well. And it's something you don't have to get out of your chair to do as well. And I mean, not everyone's going to be able to do it to the same extent or anything like that. Um, but it's certainly something that, you know, when you're in your chair, it can actually really help. Um, and I guess like if you're sort of, you know, looking at something for um, perhaps like more advanced things and um, so forth there, like I think, you know, body weight exercises, um, you know, are something that are really valuable. Like um, I like chin-ups. Um, and I mean, that can be, again, like a variation, like it can be something where if you've got like a bar that you can access or something that's like set up to the just above like your wheelchair height, like that you can reach that type of thing, like even just hanging, just pulling, you know, like you don't have to do the complete exercise or anything like that. But again, it's like, you know, somewhat of like a stretch, um, but I guess like it's a starting point, you know, like even, you know, again, it's not something for everyone, but like if you can get to the point where you're up here and if you can pull yourself to further, that type of thing, just, you know, gradually increasing the same sort of thing, just like, you know, lifting up, you know, off the side guards of the tires out of your wheelchair as well, just, you know, more and more. It's just, it's a start and moving from there, I guess. So, Fantastic. Thanks, Lake Grant. Um, Nas, is there anything um, in particular, if you if someone could have a takeaway in terms of exercise or transfers? Yeah, look, um, a lot of people probably don't know what their options are. I mean, um, exercise and that, I mean, just look at it as your daily activities, you know, just create a routine for yourself. And, you know, if you don't like the word exercise, um, you know, we're, we're, whatever we do throughout the day is some sort, some form of exercise, you know, just look at it that way and create a routine. I think that's really important. Um, a lot of people uh, actually don't know um, their capability as well and what options they've got. I think um, it's really important. Uh, I was going to mention, uh, Lockie, on our AQA's YouTube channel. Um, I'm not sure if I share something in chat, um, if, if that goes out to everyone out there, if they're able to see uh, the link. But I'm just going to share it anyway, and hopefully people will, will get it. But on our AQA YouTube channel, I mean, there's so many different videos on sports and leisure and health, fitness and well-being that people can sort of check out um, at their leisure. And uh, um, our, our peer support program too, I just had a look earlier today. Now, um, we've got 700, sorry, um, 276 years of lived experience at AQA, believe it or not. That, sound, that, that sounds huge. Of course, that's not one person, that's multiple people, but... Um, I think people need to make use of uh, peer support, ask the questions, just get in contact um, about, you know, if, if they want to do something, if they don't know how to go about it, um, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll work something out with you. 100% now, as well said, it's, um, you know, if you've just had a recent injury or anything and, um, you know, you don't know who to talk to, don't know the best recommendations. You know, there's a lot of physios and exercise physiologists and personal trainers that are absolutely fantastic. But depending on how you see it, um, there's almost nothing better than having someone in, in a similar situation to you and be able to bounce back off what maybe what they did and taking notes off how, they, how they've done their sort of um, recovery and how, you know, it could help you. Like, say, for example, myself, um, I might look for someone who's, you know, a high para to help me out. Whereas someone with a low injury might go to Grant and sort of, well, even Stephen and just sort of look for advice in that regard, for sure. Shante, is there um, any takeaways that you give to anyone you could recommend in terms of exercise or transfers? 
Um, not much. You just have to keep doing it, I guess. The more you keep moving, like the less you feel sore and the less you feel tired. That's what I've learned over the years. So. Brilliant. Well said. And it does, it does help a lot by, by moving a lot. It actually creates a lot more energy and just healthy for your shoulders in general. What about you, Steve? Do you have any takeaways you could recommend for everyone? Um, yeah. So for my takeaways, um, if, you, if, if motivation is something you're struggling with, um, yeah, my takeaway would be to start small. Um, you know, you don't have to start with, as, as people said before, you don't have to start with going to the gym. You can start by pushing around your house. Um, if you want to play sport um, and you don't know where to start, um, as Naz said, the first, the best thing to do is sort of um, look at the Spire website or call someone at Spire um, and sort of look at or talk about the resources they've got available. Um, you can go along to sport tryout days. Um, or like if, you know, and, and sort of with sport, you can boot off something you're passionate, you're really passionate about. Um, if you're absolutely mad about the AFL, um, there's a whole wheelchair AFL competition that started over the last few years um, with a whole bunch of clubs being aligned with um, the former football club, you know, Richmond, Eston, Collingwood, Carlton. Um, and they sort of play, play throughout the winter, the winter months. Um, or like if you're passionate about tennis, um, you know, when they have their, their, their sort of tennis days, um, you can go along and just watch as a spectator, um, do the same thing for football or even even rugby. Um, yeah, and just go along and, and, and sort of watch. Um, and that's that's sort of a good way to be involved as well um, because then you can you can talk to some people and have some time about their recommendations or how to get into it or, or look at some guidance that way. Um, and then sort of build from there. So, um, you know, there are different things you can do to start um, you know, to start small, you know, take things step by step and and, and find the, the resources and knowledge you need to, um, you know, to get to where you want to go. Brilliant. Well said, Stephen. There's um, there's a lot of options out there. You, um, you know, pick up your phone, send an email, AQA, um, even push mobility, you know, just get in touch with someone, ask, just ask around what's out there. And, you know, there's it's no harm in asking. Um, you may it may change your life. Um, it may just help a little bit, but asking will definitely make a big difference. So Grant, you've got your hand up. Did you, um, something you wanted to say? Yeah, thanks, Lucky. I was literally just going to say just like around that, like with the peer support things. And I guess like I remember sort of just being, you know, like first injured and things like that. And I didn't really, um, I guess like, you know, like have a great deal of people to talk to or anything like that. But like I sort of, you know, look at my own sort of situation now and things. And I really enjoy, you know, actually getting to talk to other people that maybe are, um, you know, like a newly acquired injury or, you know, whichever, whatever, even young kids that like already have been living, you know, like with the disability and things coming through kind of thing. I think leaning on people that, you know, like already have like experience, like is super important, like, you know, through every single aspect of life, you know, like, I guess, you know, like, you know, I'd love to be able to sort of, you know, like go back and, you know, see myself 11 years ago and tell, you know, myself back then what I now know kind of thing. I think that's really important just because, you know, like people, I don't know, I think everyone on this panel, you know, as has been clearly shown as, you know, like happy to share information and, you know, lived experience and things like that, you know, like don't, you know, like be shy to, you know, to ask questions of people because, you know, if you don't ask, you don't know. It's really important, you know, whether it's, you know, anything from, you know, a transfer or navigating NDIS or, you know, I guess just like being out in the community or sexual health, anything, you know, like it's really, really important, you know, like just, just to ask, you know, like people don't buy it, you know, people are happy to share. So. Absolutely. Well said, Grant. I, um, I remember when I, you know, first got in the hand cycle and then just talked to Alex Welsh, who I race against and, um, you know, even though it might be my competition, Love getting down, seeing him and seeing the whole, even though cycling is an individual sport, it's still a community, you know? So getting down and even as you show up, you might be a top level racer, or you might be a mid level racer, or a low, just riding your bike really. But it's just the community, the community is, is quite powerful to spend there and to, to spend time with people and just having conversation. You never know what you'll learn. You'll be amazed. Um, so, Maya, was there anything, any takeaways um, you'd like to? 
you think anyone should take from in terms of exercise and transfers? Yeah, I think just getting into the getting in the community, I think that's one of the best forms of instant incidental exercise, but also transfers and improving wheelchair skills and things like that. Um, I think yeah, there are so many things that you would experience in the community that you won't even realise. And that's kind of a form of exercise too, especially when you're needing to put push up a hill or enter into a building or get around. Um, I think that's one of the best things that I could really say is just getting into the community and going out with friends and family because I know going out for brunch is one of my favourite activities, but to get there, sometimes it can be a, a workout in itself. Um, and if you're not ready for that yet, that's why our, also our QA's wheelchair skills program is beneficial because you can improve that confidence then you can go into the community and kind of feel the, the confident and, and able to. Such an important part, getting out in the communities as much as you can. You know, whether it's just down your local shops and everything like that. I'm quite good friends with a lot of people at my cafe and the veg shop. And when I had a recent accident, went in there, they'd, they'd miss me. You know what I mean? And just, you know, and just hearing that goes, wow. You know, it's just, it makes such a difference with your quality of life. Um, all righty. So I'm conscious of time. We're at 2.30. Um, I'll just sort of just leave about a minute or so for anyone, um, any of the attendees wanting to ask a question. And um, if there's any anyone in the, any of the panelists that would like to um, maybe add a final comment at all, yes, lucky. I just had a thought that um, possibly some of the participants are not in wheelchairs. However, um, a lot of the information um, or the conversations we've had regarding exercise still applies. And the importance of you know keeping fit and keep moving. Um, so yeah, I just thought the people that um, are not using chairs that do have spinal cord injuries that, that maybe the transfer aspect um, may not be as relevant. But um, yeah, definitely the exercise. And yeah, I totally agree. What Maya said is getting out, um, getting involved in the community, breathing some fresh air, getting out of the house. Um, that's all so important. Um, I can see Collins raised a hand. Uh, I'm sure um, if we're able to include Colin to be able to speak his question. Lars, can you help me in that regard? Uh, yes, I do. We want to get him to come on board. Yeah, answer live, is it? Yep. And no, so it was. Um, Colin, Joe. Yeah, one sec. Um, I think I've got it allowed to talk. Yeah, uh, Colin, can you try to speak? Yep, I just unmuted myself. Beautiful. Um, yeah, basically, I was just going to put my 10 cents in. Um, I've been a quad for 45 years, um, but in the last couple of years, I've got into building a hand cycle up. Um, it's only a manual one. But um, I've got an order in for an electric assist at the moment. It'll be um, coming through eventually. But um, hence, it's, it's been interesting because in those many years, um, I've tried snow skiing, water skiing, um, sailing, um, basically anything I can get my bum into. Um, and it's interesting how new sports come out, new new exercises come out. Um, and uh, hand cycling certainly seems to be one that's um, starting to have a bit of a impetus that's um, of interest. As a, an old fat, fat quad, um, I don't try and transfer out of my chair into the hand cycle on my own. I use a hoist. Um, it's a lot safer for me. I've broken two hips already, one, one broken water skiing. Um, and I don't want to do it again. So I just take the easy way and use a sling and a silly mounted hoist and just get dropped in and out of the um, hand cycle that way. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd pass that on to others who may be in anticipating and so the other way is thing that I've got is I've got a 
my ceiling ho hoist is a Voyager portable one. So you can just try it in the boot of the car and hook it onto any tree that you feel stronger, that you feel secure enough to, or, or playground equipment. And that could be used to transfer you in and out of a hand cycle away from your home base. That's all I wanted to say. Brilliant. Thanks so much for adding, um, adding that in, Colin. Uh, is there any other final comments or, or any other questions that our panelists or attendees would like to ask or offer? Colin, Colin did um, wrote, oh, wrote something earlier on about transfer boards and traveling with a mm -hmm. large transfer board. And he mentioned about um, whether a folding transfer board uh, could be possible, a lot easier to carry around. I was just looking and Googling transfer boards or foldable ones, and I saw one. So I think they do exist. But um, Colin, I think you were thinking of um, designing one. Yeah. That correct? Uh, yes, um, there's a group at Swinburne who wanted some projects, and I suggested a collapsing or folding or telescoping slide board. Um, I've had some designs in my head for many, many years. Because um, when I went round to Rome, carrying a slide board with us was a real pain. And when I went to America, um, carrying a slide board is a real pain because there's just nowhere in a manual wheelchair to hold a two foot long board comfortably. Um, and I was curious as to whether other people had had Similar experiences, that's all. And I'd also be interested in what folding one that you've um, actually found. Yes. Um, I've got it here. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I will contact you separately, Colin. That'd be great, Georgie. Yes. Thank you. Got, I've got a picture of it. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can say that. Yeah, not, so. Not seen that one. That looks interesting. Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, forward that on to you, Colin. And, um, but that's the only one that popped up, but I haven't done considerable uh, research. But yeah, it is quite interesting. It'd be something that I'd be interested in as well. I totally agree. Carrying that around um, is not ideal. Yep. Just to add to that, um, that there's a lot of people out there that are always willing to help. Um, for example, for me, I um, to get into swimming, when I swim, my legs stay bent and they give me resistance and it makes it really, really, really hard. So my brother's quite the handyman. He builds ramps, any house I move into, so I can almost move anywhere. Um, and I asked him, I said, oh, can you help me figure out sort of a, a splints for my legs to keep them straight? So he got, being a plumber, he got a PVC pipe. He cut in half lengthwise, so it opens up. Then he put Velcro straps and strapped straps, three straps to strap around my knee and then the bottom and top of my leg. And so when I swim, I'm streamlined. And for me, it makes swimming so much easier. So that's just a that's just a random example of um, a lot of people out there that can create things to help. And um, so don't be shy of asking people around and especially engineers, they love it. <laughs> um, so... Grant has had to leave because he's busy back at work. Um, I want to say big thanks on his behalf. He's um, contributed so much, and it was fantastic having him on. And Nas as well had to get had to leave as well, and he's been invaluable in helping helping out. Um, is there any sort of final questions that any of the um, attendees want to ask, or that any final comments the um, panelists want to offer? All righty. Well, thank you so much, panellists, for joining. Um, and thank you, everyone, that's come along and listened to it. It's been absolutely fantastic um, to help present this. Um, oh, they're sorry. There is a question that's popped up. Oh, no, just someone said thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so this will – we're hoping to get this together and then put this on YouTube so you can refer back to it whenever you want if you need any more inf information. But, again, reach out to AQA if you need anything. And um, thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic day.